suppose you have a customer that you need to send the invoice every month and if you have only one customer that's not a problem but let's say you have 20 or 200 or maybe 2000 customers where you need to send the invoice or any other documentation every month on a regular basis and that's become kind of like a problem so one of the solution would be to automatize this process and send the you know invoices or some documents that you send on regular basis every month automatically and that's what the script mailman does so um, here in this example I unpacked it on drive C so it's drive C and then the folder named mailman and inside this folder you can see the XLS file XLSM actually this batch file for archiving the files <coughs> so how this thing works this is the Excel file with the <coughs> Visual Basic script and in here you can see all these tables and I'm gonna explain them in a minute so um, let's say for instance that in our example you would have five customers and then each customer has its own folder uh, which is located in the mailman folder right now so you can see that uh, the customer folder Irina is here and then this is the second customer folder then this is the third and then this is the fourth and the fifth folder so let's say every month you need to send some documents so for the customer if you go inside the customer folder you will see the year folder which is also selected here and this folder represents the year <coughs> and then in the year folder there's another folder which represents the month so for this demonstration each customer has its own month and you can specify it in a file but for every month you obviously will you know put here new values so if you send everything for November uh, then there will be you know what's the November month uh, what is that nine month and then if it's December then it's 12 months and so forth now uh, let's say that you put the documents that you want to send to the customer uh, for the uh, you put them in the appropriate uh, month folder here and here for demonstration you will see that each customer has some documents and you may have multiple documents with a different format it may be some pictures PDF files or text files it doesn't really matter uh, and you can see here's the PDF file and three pictures so uh, in Excel file you should first specify the email address and you can do multiple emails addresses for one customer um, and you can do it with a semicolon and also it's uh, kind of like a tips here that you can add multiple email addresses for a customer <coughs> um, this is the fields that are not mandatory should be filled out you can leave it blank it's just for you you can put the customer name first name and last name so um, now we have these folders with the names listed under customer folder and we have the year and we have the month now to construct the email we need also a subject line and as you can see from this example they may be different but they may be the same <coughs> for example if you're sending out the reports for December for every customer you can put the subject line you know reports for December and just copy it all the way through same thing goes for message body this 
is just for example all the emails have different messages a message body but you can put one you know one message body for everyone and then um, this is the flag to skip the sending so if you need you know for some reason you don't want to send uh, you know something to the to the customer so you can put the flag actually you can put any uh, character here it doesn't need to be s it may be anything like one or anything because if this field is not empty then uh, the you know this the script will uh, skip this line okay so now when we have these files here we need to um, make one file out of multiple files so we need to zip them up to create the attachment and then our script can pick up the attachment and generate the email for each customer and to do this we're gonna use this batch file which is using this uh, free software called isarc and then now um, let's say we put all the documents that we want to send to the appropriate folders and that's what we want to send to our customers so we run this script and here's the description of the script you can see that this script will go into every subfolder and zip all the files and each folder into attached documents zip files basically it means that it will go in each folder and everything that this script finds in the folder it will zip up to this you know one file so in case it will update the attached documents.zip contents if any previously zipped file was changed so like if you change something and you want to update the zip file you can run the script one more time and then uh, whatever was updated it will be overwritten in the final zip file and then however it will not delete it from the archive if it was deleted then uh, after it was zipped so uh, basically if the archive was created with these two files and then for some reason you decided that you don't want to send this one and you just deleted it and then you rerun the script again it will not delete it from the uh, zip file so in case you need to delete and uh, you know you don't want to send file that was zipped you need to delete the zip file itself and then run the script again and then you will get the desired result okay so and then if nothing actually if nothing has been changed then script does nothing okay so I'm gonna press the space button and now the script goes into uh, directories and it zip up you see like it zip up the files for me okay done now if we go to the folders we will see that our documents were zipped in this file and it happens for every single folder that you put in this directory so here you go and then yeah if you just need to update something or you add a new folder here uh, you can just run the script again and uh, you will see now that if I run it again since nothing has been changed it will do nothing and I will show you so nothing to do nothing to do nothing to do because everything you know is the same I mean no updates has been done so see like it doesn't hurt to run it again and uh, nothing really changed so as you can see the files are here now when we um, run this step before we start sending our emails we now have prepared uh, documents for every customer and uh, the next thing we uh, can do here is start with a row and that means that the script will start sending emails generating actually not sending it will generate the email in uh, uh, in open in Microsoft Outlook uh, so we can put here the row which you want to start this process so let's say you 
have a long list of the customers and then you want to send the particular section uh, then you can specify you know start with row 11 and then you actually can put where to stop so you can put 2 and you can put 26 here and then the only this section will be sent uh, to the customer but in our case we're gonna start from the row number 2 which is this one and then uh, since the first row is the header so we're gonna start from first line also uh, there is a logging here so I will leave this checked and you can see the log on the sheet too I'm gonna show you it in a minute and then here's the interval between emails um, so in case you know we have a slow computer or you have some restrictions on your machine for you know for spam prevention you can specify the uh, interval between you know the uh, emails will be created now in our case we're gonna leave it like that and then this setting actually use it uses the account in Outlook which is used to generate these emails and the account is this one so in Outlook you may have different accounts but uh, if you go to properties you can see that so this is um, the properties you can see the name you know of the account here which means that um, all emails will be sent from this uh, account in um, in Outlook okay so um, um, and that's pretty much it so we can try to run it now so you press the run button and now it should yeah see like it just um, it just sent the four emails and then this one was skipped because there's a flag for skipping this one and also it put the date and timestamp on the status um, which means that you know this were sent okay and now if we open our outlook uh, you can see that this um, these emails were generated under the outgoing folder and this is in Russian but still you know you can <laughs> probably guess it by you know by this icon that this is outgoing email and if you can see and uh, now we can see actually that our subject line um, our subject line matches the customer and then I'm gonna move it a little bit so you can see and the first customer that we specified two emails it actually added the second email here and if we open the email itself it's you know it's just uh, some random text here just to show you the functionality and here's the attached documents and it says July tulips and if we open it you can see those two files that were zipped and uh, yeah it's actually tulips so and then um, if your outlook is set up to work offline you can actually generate it and uh, once you know the emails are generated here you can go online and everything will be sent out also uh, the log that was enabled is you know written here and then here is says the customer customers and it's using the folder name and then you can see that four emails were generated and one was skipped and uh, if you double click on it uh, you can see the emails where it was sent you can see the subject and then you can see the body of the message that was sent and also it will list the files at least not the files but the names of the files that were zipped in the attachment so see like attach file it uh, locks the path of the file that was attached and also the files that were attached it puts the files file names that you know you can go back to the lock in case you're not sure what was sent and you can always see uh, you know what the path what the file and what actually has been sent and this lock will be adding on so if I 
you know I can actually run it again and it will do the same thing for me except the you know the timestamp will be uh, different now and I will generate four more emails so I have four already here so if I run it again uh, see like it changed the temp timestamp for me and now if you go to the sheet 2 so now it generated the second column with the new timestamp and you know all the information is here so basically when you do it on a regular basis it will uh, add your luck here here and so on and so forth so you can see uh, you can go to the log and see when you know what was sent when it was sent and what was the attachment of the emails so now uh, if I change this flag and remove it and then oh uh, yeah if we go to Outlook you can now see that we have you know a total of eight one two three four five six seven eight emails which is what was expected now if I remove them um, let me remove them from here as well yeah now I just wanna you know show the functionality so if we start with row number uh, let's say we wanna start with this one with number four um, number four and then we wanna go to row number six um, and then I uh, want a you know interval of uh, let's say 10 seconds between generating emails so um, now what we should see here is that three emails should be generated from row number four through row number six and our timestamps should change and the status here should be okay and the timestamp should change and we should see some additional logs here for particular accounts not for everybody but for those three that we decided to send and also we should see this three emails here generated so let's try it okay we run it okay so now all three emails were generated and as you can see the difference in time is uh, 10 seconds 49 59 and 09 and now if we go to the logs you can see that these three logs were added <coughs> and of course the this information will be the same as you know well actually here it was skipped so there is no information nothing was sent here but uh, in this case it be it will be the same because nothing really changed here but the the thing is that every time you send or skip it will add the timestamp into the log sheet here so you can see what's going on here and then um, yeah here we should see three generated emails and these here they are three generated emails with different uh, subject with the different um, recipients and with our text that we specified in um, in uh, in Excel file so uh, if you find this script uh, macros useful you can download it for free and use it uh, you know just don't use it for spam uh, but if you need to automatize you know sending uh, some invoices or some reports to your customers and you have a lot of customers and you can use it and you know put it here run it uh, and I think it's pretty cool to use uh, and, and that's it and have a good day and uh, share this video if you like it um, bye bye